Hey everybody, it's Peter and I'm here with Tyler. Tyler is one of the amazing people here at Peterbilt Atlantic that teaches me about trucks and he's super helpful to me. But in this video, I'm gonna do something a little different. We have to talk about horsepower and torque, especially when it comes to trucks. And as we talk about transmissions in trucks and why they're important, we have to understand what torque and horsepower is. So you understand what torque and horsepower is, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like torque is like a twisting force. And But what I wanna do is I wanna show the viewers here what torque is and horsepower is in a way that they've probably never seen before and you've probably never seen before as well. So are you ready? Sure. Yeah. All right, I want you to look at the camera. This is torque. Yeah. Wasn't that fun? Torque is fun. <laughs> you want to find out what horsepower is? Yeah, sure. All right, horsepower is even more fun. Just look at the camera. That's Ugh. horsepower. So you've probably never seen a demonstration like that, but I'm going to go into detail now by showing you what that means and why it matters to trucks. So let's do that right now. So if you think I was just hitting Tyler for fun, let's be honest, I kind of was, but let me explain what I mean. When I shoved Tyler, that was torque. And if you think about shoving this, to get this thing moving, I need to shove it. I need to really push. That is torque. But once it goes going faster and faster, remember when I smacked Tyler? Well, once I smacked Tyler, that's horsepower. So of course, the faster this spins, the faster it goes. Horsepower is something that is needed when something is already in rotation. So you're gonna be able to smack like that and be able to keep it going. But torque is what gets something moving. So when we think about trucks and transmissions, you have to use a lot of torque to get things moving. When you think about motorcycles, they have less torque, more horsepower. And of course that smacking power is what you need. So trucks don't need a whole lot of horsepower, but they do need a whole lot of torque. And what's cool about transmissions is they multiply that torque, allowing you to have more and more torque at the wheel which is where you need it to get things moving. Now, I don't want to imply that horsepower can't get something moving because horsepower and torque are actually related, but we'll talk about that in just a second here. So first of all, we talk about horsepower being sort of that smacking motion and uh, torque being the pushing motion. So this is a lightweight piece or lightweight roll of duct tape, right? Mostly used because, yeah, I use duct tape to repair stuff. But if I just smack that with horsepower, it gets moving and start from a stop to a start, it moves quite well. But if I was to move this motorcycle, it would take some more shoving like that, right? We do that and if I was to shove this car, it would take a whole lot more shoving than even that because a smack to the back of that does nothing other than hopefully I didn't dent it. But we should talk as well about, if we're gonna talk about transmissions, we should talk about torque curves and that kind of thing because that's where transmissions come in and that's where this car actually matters because cars like this, electric cars, they don't have transmissions because you have what they call instant torque. You see, an electric motor can create instant torque from down low and most electric car makers actually electronically limit the amount of torque that hits the drive wheels from a stop so they just don't peel the tires right off. But if you go 70 kilometers an hour, 80 kilometers an hour on this, so like 50 miles an hour, and floor it, it instantly takes off. Where if you go 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour in this, and floor it, or give it full throttle, it does not instantly take off unless you're in the right gear. So transmissions matter, especially for gasoline, diesel engines. And that's where motorcycles and trucks are kind of interesting because they do things differently to get different amounts of horsepower and torque. So let's take a look at the tack on this motorcycle and we'll continue digging in just a little further to make everything make sense. So when you take a look at the tachometer on this motorcycle, you can see something different than you would see in a truck and kind of different than you would see in a car as well. The red line is at 10,000 RPM. Now, here's where they talk about the relationship between horsepower and torque. So if you measure horsepower in regular horsepower and torque in foot pounds or pounds feet, whatever you want to call it, you end up with uh, the torque number and the horsepower number on whatever vehicle you have, whether it's diesel or gas, that number is going to match at 5,252 RPM. So this motorcycle makes well over 100 horsepower up around 9,000 RPM. And it's a line that kind of goes up if you look at the graph. And then it makes most of its peak torque from about 4,000 to 8,000 RPM, but the horsepower and torque number are the exact same at 5,252 
foot-pounds. What that means is that's where the horsepower goes from below the torque number to above the torque number at that 5,000. So on this motorcycle, you can see that because it revs beyond 5,252 RPM, you'll be able to tell that it for sure has more horsepower if it's making peak horsepower up at 9,000 RPM, more horsepower than torque when you look at it measured in horsepower and pounds feet of measurements. And if you look at the trucks that we were looking at, the transport trucks, they had red lines down in the three, 4,000 mark. So they never actually make as much horsepower as torque. Now this matters. So taking electric cars out of the equation, something like a motorcycle and the big, huge transport trucks have something in common. They each have a rev range. And what that means is they're spinning in the engine and it can only spin so fast, but it only makes peak torque at a certain range. So the key to a transmission is to keep the power in a certain range. In other words, as you're revving through power, you're making peak torque. Once you over rev past peak torque, your torque starts to die off again. So a transmission is going to allow you to keep it in a certain range and allow you to have that power exactly where you need it. This car doesn't need a transmission because it just makes torque everywhere. This one makes peak torque and peak horsepower at specific spots along the rev range. And it's the same thing with a big truck. Now, because this motorcycle, like that roll of tape, is quite lightweight, you need a little bit of shove to get it going, and then you need something that can spin very, very, very fast to kind of keep pushing it through. So this can spin fast, and why can it do that? Well, that's another fun thing. Let me talk about why this spins fast and a truck can't. So why can the motorcycle's engine spin fast? Well, it starts with, let's use this bicycle tire and iron as an example, or tire tool as an example. This is very small and very lightweight. And if I had to move it up and down, it's very easy to move up and down. If I had to move it up and down like this, it's very easy to move up, to move up and down. So all of the parts in a motorcycle engine are very small. And if you were to move your fingers up and down and up and up and up and down, you could do that very quickly. But if you had to move your whole leg up and down and up and down, that would be harder. So imagine all the motorcycle parts. Every time it went around in a revolution, a revolution would be once down and once fully up. Imagine that a motorcycle could go up and down, up and down, up and down. So that's one, two, three, four, five, right? Now, because I have a bad back, I'm using an empty gas can, but imagine this was full. It's a much larger, much heavier piston, and it would go down and up. So to go the same speed as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Eventually, if this was heavy, I just couldn't move it like that. I would break, things would break. So when they're small and lightweight, you can rev them to higher revolutions, which is why my motorcycle runs to 10,000 RPM. Some of your cars will run to five, six, 7,000 RPM, and trucks only rev to three, maybe 4,000 RPM, because the trucks use bigger pieces that have to move longer distances. Now, there is one other thing. You only need enough horsepower to move at certain speeds. Motorcycles, they want them to go fairly quickly. Trucks, they only need them to go just over the speed limit. So you only need enough horsepower to make it go as fast as you intend. And what that means is you don't have to rev out that truck engine. One, because you can't. All those big parts can only move so fast before things break. And small parts can move much faster. Smaller, lighter parts can move much faster before they break. So there's a whole bunch of things. And if I'm starting to lose you, let me tie it all back together now. So tying it together, torque is the pushing power to get things moving. Horsepower, once it's moving, you have to spin faster and faster and faster, but you can have lots and lots of power. And if you have lots of horsepower, you've got lots of pushing power at speed still, but torque is what gets you moving. Now in a gasoline engine or a diesel engine, you only have a small range in your revving window where you have peak torque and peak horsepower, and you're balancing that out yourself. On electric motor, torque is everywhere. So that's where the transmission comes in. And then we can talk about transmissions, why manual and automatic transmissions matter, but first of all, let's explain what the torque, or what the transmission does to the torque, it multiplies the torque. And to make that, we're gonna use another thing sitting here in my garage. So I think the easiest way for most of us to understand transmissions is to look at a bicycle. And this is the transmission, right? All it does is it shifts gears. And we all kind of know how this works. On a bicycle, our bodies are the engine. And if you think about 
how much you can rev, right? How much spinning, how much rotating power you can create, that can depend between all of us. There's a world-class cyclist that could spin this really fast. There's my mom who can't spin this much at all. Don't worry, she's not watching. And then there's me who's somewhere in between. I can only spin this at a certain rate. And there becomes a rate that is most efficient for me. If I'm spinning super slow, that's not the peak torque output. If I'm spinning super fast, that's not my peak torque output as well. But there's a rate of spinning for each individual that is the right amount to put out the most power. But the most power doesn't always equal the most speed. You need the transmission for that. So let's just take a look at the back here, pretending this is only one ring on the front, even though it's two, we'll get to that in a second. The one ring on the front, we're gonna take a look at the back here now. So when I say that the transmission multiplies the torque, you can kind of see what I mean. So imagine my chain was down here on the top gear. That would be what you would call my highway gear, right? I would spin very slowly with my pedals, but the wheel would spin very quickly, right? But then you go into up the higher gears, and then you can see that I'm sort of multiplying the, multiplying the torque. While I can only spin so fast, or there's a certain rate at which I create the maximum torque, if I'm up here, I can climb hills that I could never climb down here because this has multiplied the power that I can put to the wheel, right? So you find out that transmissions help you multiply torque. So to better understand that multiplying of torque, think about those times you've been out on a bicycle and you've gone up a hill and you've started to feel that strain, right? When you switch it into a lower gear, you still slow down, but you've got the power to go up. Now, if you had more horsepower, you could create more spinning and you could rev your engine out and make more power up top. Then you could spin faster and faster and you could continue to keep the same speed. Again, my analogies might be a little loose for you, but let's talk about automatic transmissions versus manual transmissions. So something like this, most motorcycles still to this day have a manual transmission. Why? Pretty much because it's fun. Motorcycles are all about fun and a lot of people find choosing your own gears to be fun. In most North American cars, Nowadays, they're mostly automatic. So we could talk about why in a little bit later, but let's talk about the trucking industry and talk about why you have some that are automatic and some that are manual and why some drivers swear by manual. Well, that's easy if you think about the bicycle analogy. If you are in a trucking situation and you pull up and let's say you're a logging truck and you have to go up this super steep road, well, you may have to stop to let a deer cross or a tractor cross or something else before you head up this steep road. Well, you're going to choose which gear you want before you hit the hill. Think about your car's automatic transmission. If you go up a hill and you're in the wrong gear, you can hear it gear down, gear down and go. Now do that on a bicycle. Picture you're coming up to a hill and it's a super steep hill you're gonna to wanna to gear down before you get on the steep hill because if you mess it up, you're gonna end up stopped on the hill and that's not fun. Well, that's because we don't have a lot of power and we need lots of gears to make things work for us. That's why a lot of bikes have a whole lot of gears. Well, trucks are the same way. They have so much weight to pull. If you have an automatic transmission that heads up a steep logging hill, and the truck has to feel, because it can't see ahead of itself, it has to feel the strain on its engine before it shifts gears. Well, that can leave you exactly like you are on a bicycle where you're stranded on the hill and then you gotta start all over at the lowest possible gear. Whereas if you have a manual transmission in a big truck, you can see what's coming up and choose your gears appropriately. But you might be thinking, well, why don't they just put it in the lowest gear and climb on up? Well, let's go back to the bicycle. See, a big truck is a lot like a bicycle. It doesn't have five, six, or seven speeds just like your car would. This thing has, I think, 22 different gear ratios, and a lot of trucks have 12 speeds and eight speeds, but you don't actually use every gear when you're driving normally. It's the exact same as your bicycle. If you drive this on level ground, you'll start at a mid-level gear. You'll go, in this case, I go click, click, and skip a couple gears, click, click, skip a couple gears, and that's how you would drive a manual transmission truck. It doesn't use every gear in actual order. It also gives you the ability to have some low range gearing in some trucks, which is a lot like a Jeep, which kind of cuts things in half or really slows things down, but gives you better climbing power. And if you don't understand what that is, 
We're gonna take a look at the bicycle again to make it make sense. So we already showed you all the gears on the back of this bike. There's 11 different speeds here, but I also have a low range gear here. So there's two cogs on the front. Now in a truck or in something like a Jeep, the low range gearing is not something that's highway capable. Basically, if you put this into low range gearing on a Jeep or a truck, you can spin and spin and spin, but you'll never get up to highway speeds. And if you've ever been caught in a really low gear on your bike, you kind of know what I mean. You can spin and spin and spin. You could climb any hill, it feels like, but you can't go super fast. So a low range gear is what a lot of big trucks have, which is just like a Jeep. And what that does is it allows you to take that really, really, really heavy weight, put this on the low range gear, get things moving up steep hills or difficult terrains, or just get really heavy loads moving. And then you can switch into more highway oriented gears. So exactly like your bike, that's useful. And if you think about a transport truck, sometimes they're carrying empty loads, sometimes they're carrying toilet paper, sometimes they're carrying water, right? There's things that are lighter and there's things that are heavier. And you have that low range gearing to take things like lumber up super steep, super steep hills, but also to take, to take heavy weights and get them moving before you switch into highway gears. So this video has been pretty dense, but let's back it all up and make everything make sense from torque to horsepower to transmission. So first of all, torque is that pushing power, right? It was me shoving Tyler. It was me pushing that blue playground spinning thing, right? Torque is the pushing power. Now, once things get going, smacking Tyler didn't get him moving, but if this is already moving and I push along, that will keep it moving. Again, I understand that the science of this may be disputed, but this is the simplest explanation I can talk about. So we know that torque gets you going. We know that horsepower can keep you going and keep you going at higher speeds. And we know they're related because that 5,252 RPM, those numbers cross over. So first thing we have to remember is torque is really necessary for big heavy loads and trucks like the Peterbilt trucks that I review here on this channel need a whole lot of torque, but they only need enough horsepower to keep them going at highway speeds. If you're really heavy and you want to move heavy loads, you're going to need a lot of torque. If you're really lightweight, you don't need as much torque, but you'd still want some horsepower because horsepower is fun. So what does transmissions have to do with that? Well, in gasoline engines or in diesel engines, or on bicycles, you're gonna want a transmission. On something like an electric motor, the torque is basically constant, which means that you can basically get away without a transmission like this car does. But because torque is not constant when you're riding a bicycle, in other words, the pushing power is not constant when you're riding a bicycle, or in a gasoline engine, or in a diesel engine, you have to put the revolutions in the right spot to have the most pushing power. And all of that makes sense if you've ever climbed a hill on a bike. If you're going up a steep hill in too high of a gear, you're pedaling too slowly and you can't make enough torque. If you're pedaling too fast, you're not getting enough speed. And again, you're not getting enough torque. So you want to put the torque in the engine at the right RPM and allow the transmission to control your speed. That's why it's really important to have multiple speeds on something that pulls a lot of weight. That's why transport trucks have a whole bunch of gearing. Why do we want sometimes to have manual transmissions? Well, sure, it can be a lot of fun and that's what we all hear about, but in the real working world, manual transmissions allow the driver to make decisions about what gear they should be in before they get into trouble, not as they get into trouble. In a car with a lot of power, not this car, but a car with a lot of power and a gas engine, you only have enough gears, you got plenty of power, the car can get onto a hill, make a decision and go. But on a truck towing a whole lot of weight, you're gonna wanna make sure you're in the right gear before you get on that hill so you don't get stuck on that hill. That is basically how it all works. Now, if you've never tuned to this channel before, I talk about motorcycles a lot, bicycles a little bit, uh, big trucks is a new thing, and we're talking about all these things. So if you are interested in motorcycles, power sports, or just learning about a few new things, including big trucks, make sure you hit subscribe to this channel. Do me a favor, if you've made it this far, give this video a like. And again, I understand the science may not be perfect in this video, but for explanation purposes, I think that's the easiest and best description I can give of torque, horsepower, 
and transmissions. If you want to know more about transmissions, you want to see maybe what a CVT transmission is really like compared to another type of transmission, I'm happy to do that video, make it super simple. That video would be a lot shorter, but we can talk about the pros and cons of that as well. Just let me know in the comments. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll talk to you in the next one.